the mainstream GB violence is committed by me solely. Do you get it? We need to make that clear because you've got a lot of people trying to GB this and GB that. Shut the fuck up. I was the only notorious man from SCA with this thing on my back. Going anywhere and coming back with all W's. Let's get it right. Do you know like that? Yeah. Let's get that clear. Apart from that, just shut the fuck up. I said, well, come on, my brother. I said, well, come on, my brother. I said, been, I said, yeah, I've been looking for you. I said, I've been looking for you too. Then Mallet's just gone, burn him! And I just popped off the thing. Squeezed to get him. My mentality was if he was involved in drugs or a drug game, like your fair game. In my head, it's like, well, drugs goes hand in hand with guns, and guns goes hand in hand with death. If you get involved in drugs, that's, do you get it? I wrote every coin. Full production was 211. It had a weak run initially at just the soul feel. It made me aware that I could write to a certain level and get paid. And where I fell in love with the, the arts, I definitely say it was life changing. Team Dutch posting up RIP Fox the other day. Yeah? When that same PR team badding up. Fox's kids, disrespecting Fox's kids, yeah, because he's not here, when they couldn't even, they couldn't even breathe when, when Fox was here. So you must have ended up getting, you said uh, it was about nine years before you got to the Cat B off the Cat A circuit. Um, was that a big shock or something like this when you go from the A's to the B's and that? And you said obviously there's a level of respect in the A's. Is there more drama in the B's? Um, not really. It depends on the jail in it, but um, nah. B Cat, you know, this happy to be downgraded from A Cat to B Cat, you know, like that. Because um, it's a big thing. I think for me, the most I think what I remember most about that transition from A cap to B cap was as an A cap, they would check your cell every hour. Like the observation flat, they bust it, check that you're in there, keep it moving. They do that for all the cat A's every hour. However, once you get downgraded to B cap, that no longer happens. As well as if you're A cap, someone can't just come and visit you. You gotta send the paperwork out, they gotta send it back, then it goes to the police, then it comes back to the prison, then it goes to the home office, then they clear it, do you get it? Mm. Whereas as a B cat, they just send you a VO and you can just attend the relevant prison and visit. So um that's the only really difference. But what about um is there like more foolish characters obviously like say so there's less serious criminal and more disrespectful, yeah, gonna, yeah. foolish idiot sort of character? Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna and get all that as well as people on I find that you find more people on drugs in the B cat than the A cats. So is there more opportunities for, to make money in the B cats then um for people who might be in that sort of trying to hustle in within the system. Wherever because, you are, it don't matter what prison you are, if you want to make money. So there's still people hustling in the A cats obviously. Yeah. Then. Everybody's got to hustle in somewhat one way or another. Um but yeah, that's just pretty standard. Hmm. And um, was there an instant where you ended up having, I don't, I don't know if we can cut this out if you don't want to talk about it, um, did you end up having an affair with a screw at a certain point? Um, yeah, 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 on a couple of occasions. On a, what, a couple of different occasions, yeah. Yeah. And talk to me about how that happened and then and... Um, like I said recently, obviously, 
I explained on the show that would um, one I met in Whitemore um, she was a nurse um, she was trafficking tobacco in for someone else cut the story short um, unfortunately his cell went up in flames he was moved off the wing I moved into his cell got his job and me and the chick we connected And yeah, it, 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 it's, fun, it's just fun, fun and games from there, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, just to protect myself, I used to record when she was in the cell, an electric um, double taped recorder um, that I used to borrow it off of. Who used to borrow it off? I used to borrow it off Emmanuel, Emmanuel de Silva. Yeah, yeah, shout out, Emmanuel. Big up, Emmanuel de Silva. I used to borrow it off him to record stuff. Um, mm-hmm, that just reminds me. I remember one time I was in the cell, getting up to whatever. I came out and I put my finger under. It man, childish, I know, but it's prison where life has come. Give us a break. I put my finger under his nose. He wasn't too impressed. But yeah, um, obviously it came on top. Yeah. Um, what were the consequences for her? Did she end up getting in big trouble or just losing the job? She didn't end up going. Do you know what? I don't even know what happened to her. I, I know that they did, they tried to discipline her, but my understanding was that, that they couldn't sack her without a statement from me, because I got shipped out to HMP Strangeways, and um, that was after a few months. Then two governors came to see me, and they asked me to be a witness. They accepted that what I was saying, I because they was trying to say that I was blackmailing her to traffic phones and stuff. But they, they accepted what I said. Yes. Basically, we was, we was um, up to no good. Yeah, straight. And um, so going on to a completely different topic, obviously in 2011, your play ended up getting done in the theatre. But going back to, obviously why the play got written and obviously you just mentioned previously that you started doing writing obviously the play um the theater production every coin um when was it you, you wrote it was that like in 2010 obviously a couple of years prior to that or what was and why did you write it was um i wrote every coin i can't remember exactly when but it, it, the full production was 211 so maybe from 29 to 10. yeah yeah um to eight or whatever, I began working on it. The way it came about is I I was writing an auto bio, an electric typewriter, um, which I used for my OU modules. Yep. At the time, I was studying for um, a BA honours in English literature, the arts past and present. So I had an electric typewriter anyway. So yeah, you can get bored in a cell. So I began. Um, type in my autobiography. I went to the library, um, got out certain books on um, script writing, book writing, and stuff. Yeah, and just, just basically just played around and found my voice. Because um, obviously you have to find your voice. And I had, so I had an autobiography that was ready. And I wrote to. Um, Synergy Theatre Project asking them if they could help in any way in terms of helping me get my book out there and the artistic director at the time was an old lady called Esther Baker she wrote back and she was like that in my field I'm into theatre however um, read this um, she sent me a she sent me a um, a script called Alima's, is it Alima's Kitchen? I think it might be Alima's Kitchen, um, which was basically set in Murder Mile in Hackney, written by a guy called Kwame. Um, I read it. And it, it was actually an, an award winning script, but I thought it was weak and I told her so, and she was like, do better than and that was the birth of That was the birth of every coin. Um, I got right in it. 
I've got about four or five initial drafts. It was an exciting time because at the time I was also um, I also fell into a relationship with the artistic director. Do you get it? Um, Crazy. Yeah. So it was it was bananas because she was obviously coming to visit me and. Um, And so were you involved with the theatre production and that? Were you actually have some sort of role in the sort of sculpting or some sort of choice of the cast in it? Did you, were you involved in it at all? Yeah, do you know what? They had to send me... Um, they Basically, they, they sent me the actors' bios, um, including Headshot, um, from... I can't remember, Spotlight. So basically I'll get their history and stuff and I'll have to look at the characters to see if I felt they fit, fit the, I mean, look at the actors to see if they fit yeah. the character. But I had final say, did you get it? Um, we agreed on most, uh, we agreed on most. I think where we didn't agree actually, what, oh, we had a little issue with Daniel Vitus. She um brilliant actress. It was between her and another girl, I can't remember her name, I think it was it was Savannah actually. And I, I went with Daniel Vitas. Did you get it? Um and you can see she's doing mad stuff at the moment. Um Petra Lee Chang, I wanted her because I remember her from EastEnders playing Naomi. Whereas the director, they didn't want her. They wanted yeah, so you're actively involved, so that must be the yeah. right buzz in that. And then obviously end up getting, it came out at Soho Theatre, was it? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So obviously after all the actors were, was cho were chosen, um, there were auditions, then yeah, it was, it had a week run initially at the Soho Theatre. And obviously it ended up doing unbelievably well, it was a sellout and... Yeah really highly acclaimed yeah quickly great acclaimed. yeah great write-ups um yeah for sure i was uh, even today do a bit of research, reading the guardian article real good art, article about it wasn't it yeah um, so that must be unbelievably unbelievable for you at them times there where you were obviously you must have been really proud of yourself um obviously in your past career and stuff like this there wasn't sort of it, probably a feeling of them sort of children and stuff like this that you would have probably got so it must have been quite overwhelming feeling you know in jail having achieved something so much yeah for sure it, it, you know it was, it was a long process a lot of hard work it was yeah ridiculous left me emotionally and mentally drained to write that script because by the end I'm sure I've done maybe seven if not eight eight drafts um but yeah, you know, once it opened and all the tickets sold out before the first night and got the, then the reviews were like, yeah, obviously a proud moment, but um, didn't basically in that too long, I was more focused on trying to um, write some more scripts. So when I was released, I would have. Next thing is in learn pipeline. That obviously gave you the Obviously, in order to do that, you must have had the love for writing. But now, obviously, you knew you could be successful. Was that like a life-changing turning point moment as well? <coughs> until yeah. you have some success, you don't know surely how your stuff's going to be um, taken in. Yeah, hundred percent. If you, you know, you can write something and believe in it or whatever. Um, I didn't really expect that, but I knew the script was good because I, I, you know the amount of work that I put into it. So, um, yeah, def definitely um, it made me aware that I could write to a certain level and get paid. And where I fell in love with the, the arts, the, the, the art of creating story and character and blow, watching actors blow, blow life into these characters. Um, yeah. I'd definitely say it was life changing. Yeah, big things. And um, off the back of that, did was there lots of people? Obviously, I'm sure got in touch with you. Obviously, it was probably hard for them. Obviously, when you're in jail still, but did you have people who wrote to you or 
Did any opportunities come for it, or did you like get a few opportunities came in and straight away? Um, the lead actor was a guy called Clifford Samuels. Um, I didn't know this. It, it, the agent actually told me this, but he advised um, his agent, which was a guy called Philippe Carden, to sign me. So Philippe, I think fit well. Philippe watched the play, and then he wrote to me. Um, saying he wanted to sign me, blah, blah, blah. And I did sign with him. Um, Claire, a lady called Claire Slater from Rear Day, she wrote to me. Um, and she was like, yeah, thank you for introducing me to this, a world that I would have never known about. And um, she, Rear Day was like a headhunting company for Channel 4. So she asked for my permission to um, pitch my work to Channel 4. So yeah, all sorts happens. Big things. And so then what was the next next step then? What were you working on next then after obviously, I'm sure you had a little bit of time to recover after the theatre thing and sort of chill out for a second. And then what did you work, what was your next project then after? Um, I was just writing scripts, whether they were play scripts, majority were film scripts, and obviously I was forever tightening up the autobio, mm. which um, you guys are now getting as audio books. Um, but that was the bio, and that's why it's so tight to get, can't work so long on it to make sure, you know. Um, of course. Yeah, have that. X Factor. And so what you said, you've written a load more theatre scripts and you've written a yeah, load of I was just scripts. Yeah, I was just writing a load of, film after scripts every well. coin, I was writing a load of scripts, film scripts. Um, but I, I made a decision in my, my head that I didn't want to have any more theatre productions or, you know, I know what's going on soon by now, do you get it? Um, in a few years. Um, I didn't want to put on another theatre show and I wasn't there. Because even though they they recorded it for me, and I got to watch it on DVD. That was what actually was, next question I was going to ask you. So that yeah. must have been when yeah. did you get to watch that at the time while you were in jail? They managed to send the DVD into you, or did you have to wait years to watch it? No, they sent it in. They were allowed yeah. to send it in. And so that must have been a right buzz watching that. Like I say, yeah. Were you happy? <coughs> you were happy of how it came out and that, and it was what you envisaged. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, but you would have rather been there to obviously have a hand yeah at least one of the days I, I would have liked to um been there but you know we moved not possible at them times it wasn't possible and so obviously if you'd been outside your life I'm sure would have literally taken a whole different space at that times fully but obviously you're still in jail having to deal with everyday drama of jail and all that sort of stuff so Sure, you're still having your scrapes and scraps in jail, no? During them times in the cat bees, we the yeah. system. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah. And um, obviously, you end up working your way through those times over five, six years, get into the season, then by 2016, you end up getting to DCAT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was it 2016? I think you said you said to me. First time, yeah, I think back 2016, the first time. First time, right, where well, you end up getting chucked back off one. So you yeah. end up getting DCAT initially then in 2016. And which DCAT was this? I went to North Sea Camp from Stockholm. Okay. No, from Lincoln, sorry. And um, obviously that must have been a whole different sort of, even a bigger step from the A to B as such, going from the C's to the D's, because there's no fences. It's, it's freedom, isn't it? You can leave at any point. It's literally... Yeah, hundred percent. The, the literally, responsibility. There literally was no fence. It had just a barrier, the size of my hand, like a car park. Just, that was it. There was no fence. Um, but yeah, you know, you just go with it, man. You know, you know, decap. You worked hard to get there, so um, you're mentally ready. You got your plan, what you're gonna do. You know what not to do. Um, did you start having day releases and get on to weekend releases potentially? Or I did. Jobs I, I, I was there for nine months and I had day releases. I was supposed to be getting, I was supposed to get my own leave soon. And then 
the place was just a bit reckless at the time. But what's basically happened is the outside security team has come. They've come for fucking to search whoever. And I'm one of the targets. So I was in the gym and someone's gonna tell me, yo, DST, outside DST on the national search team. Um, they're here, they're looking for you. I'm like, right, cool. So I went to them. Do you get it? I went to them, they took me to the reception, maybe sit on the chair, they're saying the chair's going off. Yeah, the pole's going off, everything's going off, yeah? Anyway, they made a decision, they're shipping me out because they're saying I've got a phone. I'm saying I haven't got a phone. They ship me to Lincoln. I get to Lincoln, I sit on a chair, the chair don't go off. Go past the pole, the pole don't go off. Yeah? So now when I get up on the wing, I'm telling my, not that day, the following day, I'm telling my lawyer like, yo, it's a setup thing, innit? There was no phone. So cut the story short, after being there for six months, I got sent back to a decap and I went to HMP Ford. Mm. So it would have been, it would have actually been, DCAT would have been, he's 17, I think 17. Yeah, and how was Ford then? Obviously down by the sea, nice part of the world. Yeah, but you know what, HMP Ford was all right. Um, you got billets, um, I think 12, 14 guys on each billet. It's like an army base, isn't it? Um, but do you know what? And that was the hottest summer. That was the hottest. It was very hot that summer. Sure. Um, nice yeah. to be in a decap rather than locked up where you could be outside and do yeah, what you do. Yeah, come on, man. You're, you're out, you're going home. I was going on home leaves as well. Um, I had three home leaves. And then I was kicked out after, again, nine months. Why? Someone, I didn't know at the time, but I know now that someone kept. Yeah, just basically someone was giving information that I had a telephone and I had a mobile without going into too deep, do you get it? Mm. And I didn't. They didn't find one either. I still got shipped out for allegedly maybe having a mobile phone. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so what happened? You eventually end up getting released from the B or C cap, was it B C cap? Yeah, I got shipped I got kicked out of there. I went to HMP um Lewis. Yeah. And then, that was like November the 1st, 2018, I remember the day. Big day for you. Yeah, and I, I, I didn't go home until October the 4th, 2019. So I got another 11 months in close conditions. Yeah. And um, so how long at that point there, by the time you got home then in October, how long had you served? Um, 17 years, 11 months. So it's years. Call it eighteen years, really. Fucking hell. Mm. Crazy. And um, so, talk to me about obviously getting out. How hard the adjustment was straight away. Obviously, it must have been. I know people have done half that time. We found it real hard coming out. Um, it must be an adjustment process, no? Yeah, for sure. But that's what DCAT's for, isn't it? Especially I'm um, in H and P North Sea Camp. That's what you get those day releases for, and it's to go out and readjust to um, being in the community or going to the shops or ordering things yourself to get it. So when you eventually do get out, it's not a, do you get what I mean? It's not a shock to you. They've even got houses, um, apartments in North Sea Camp where you no longer eat in the prison. You got to buy your own shopping, you cook, you get it. Again, preparation for. Um, so yeah, definitely a lot of adjustments, um, getting used to normal things like, you know, going to the local store and self-serving. Of course. Do you, do you get it? Like, what the fuck? But, um, yeah, but that the decats help you. Yeah. Because you're going out so often that those little stumbles or... Um, insecurities that you may have they are ironed out by the time you get out yeah and um, you know when you landed did you try and were you what, back into London straight away no, no. I was in, I was in um, Brighton Brighton so that's pretty better for you and then in terms of touching base back with all your 
friends and stuff like this or former gang members or sort of people with criminal ties stuff like this were you quite cautious about who you're around straight away and all this sort of stuff yeah I was then I still am I don't have it with criminals um, or for my old friends from my old lifestyle um, that's not where I'm at so it, it's pointless um, yeah it, it, it's, it's, point, it's, it's pointless being around people who are active or in one way or another whether it's active with guns on the streets or with drugs or fraud or whatever if you're not, if, if you're not on that um, it doesn't make any sense do you know what I watched the I, I watched the podcast today, Tricky, doing the R.I.P. tribute to um, iPod, and he touched on the same issue in terms of he doesn't like to be around people who have that energy because he's not on that, so it puts him at a, it put him at a disadvantage. So he avoids, and I, I I'm like that. I've been like that for a while. So you get it? in terms of. If you're on the roads, you're on the roads. I'm not on the roads. So there's no need for me to be around you or for you to be following me. Don't get me wrong, people do contact me on social media um, about the stories or, 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 or whatever, and I will engage, but away from social media, nah. So what about when you land to people like Fox and that? Were you keeping up with him and that? Were you touch base with, obviously, your Fox? 100%, but I think before, do you know what? I didn't speak to Fox for about three, four years, whatever, until two. Was it two eighteen? It was two eighteen when I was in Ford. Yeah, two eighteen. Um, I got his number via Toby Johnson, who got it off of Shane, I believe. And that was just before he got nicked. Then he got nicked. But I was speaking to him before he came out. Do you get it? And the reason why I was engaging with him was because he is, as I've said on my, my platform, when he came, before he came out, his whole thing was Dutch, that's it. I'm going to put everything into this project and I'm going to make it happen. He wasn't talking, no, oh, I'm going to sell drugs or I'm going to, he wasn't talking none of that stuff, do you get it? So I could fuck with him because his mindset was, but it wasn't really about linking him. Cool. Again, I've just done too long to uh, be linking someone who's maybe going to change or maybe going to make the right decisions. I didn't know that at the time. Did you get it? So it was more on the phone. And I'm um, talking about, about your situation. Uh, um, you know, um, having come out after 20 years close to you behind the door do you still feel like at that time obviously a couple of years ago maybe still to this day do you still have to be cautious about where you go or keep your head down slightly to a degree or be aware to a degree from enemies from your past obviously I'm yeah. sure in the past you must have done or you obviously did do bad things to people you not no fears about this past stuff or anything coming back no um, no all my all good yeah I'm sure obviously if you've been caught through nearly 20 years in the system and that I'm sure you've come across most of your enemies or what anyone during them times there where you can't get where you're all locked under one roof so being out in the big open world there's no fear of that obviously I didn't really have that many enemies I don't think um, no. personally um don't get me wrong, you get people who claim to be enemies. I, I, I know people who have made themselves a victim um, of mine when I've never even seen them on the road just to be a part of the picture. Do you get it? But, um, yeah, I, I, it's only one firm I, I, I was really going head to head with. Mm. Um. And talk to me about um, your two books then. And so when the first book came out and thinking behind that, um, 
happy you were with the response that came out. Talk to me about the whole thing when the first book came out. Obviously, a product of my bar environment book number one, which I heavily recommend people is uh, great books and very very gripping. It's sort of stuff you can't stop listening to. And uh, yeah, I give you a props for that. Congratulations. So talk to me about product of environment book number one. Yeah. Um when I came out to 19, I decided, you know what? I had it there already, it's auto bio. So I just took a section off and recorded um, a product of my environment, book one. Um, Real Life TV, they posted it, and he had, he had an audience. And they liked it. Um, yeah, done well. It sold a, sold a lot of units, and people liked it. Yeah, definitely. It should have done a lot more. I think there's a lot of people out there who obviously didn't know about it, and hopefully it should still sell a lot more as time goes on. Um, and so, obviously, you were happy with the response from the book, and yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and how did you um, did you sort of self publish it? Yeah, book one, yeah, we, we self-published it. Um, excuse me, book two. And is it, sorry, to, oh. sorry to check, is there a hardback to book one? No. Why not? And is there going to be ever? Not to book one, but to the old, my old autobio, they will be, here. Yeah. Okay, so that's sort of like a preview. There is going to be a main hardback yeah. book, yeah. the full, bigger one then. The full one. And then um, let's move on to obviously book number two then. And so when did that end up um, dropping? Obviously this one caused a uh, lot more noise in certain ways, didn't it? So Yeah, book two I done when I was on recall. And why did you get a recall to? I don't want to go into that. But um, all I would say is that um, my probation officer who recalled me at the time no longer works in that position. Okay. And had to leave her job. And so what um, What date was it that the... And the reason why I'm going to that is because there's a civil case pending um, for unlawful recall and breach of Article 5. So it's, yeah. Say no more, we don't want to mess up the case and when the time's right and obviously all that's been through the system, then yeah. we can shed light on it and hopefully sit down again and you can shed light on the injustices. Mm -hmm within the system and so when did book number two come out what date was it then bro, roughly i can't tell you what month bro so this is in 2020 though yeah 2020 yeah yeah i think yeah it was 2020 and obviously yeah, um, late, late 2020 yeah yeah and obviously um in june of 2020 fox ended up getting killed and so talk to me about how that affected you. Obviously, you and Fox being real close at certain points was a big blow to you. Was this someone you were planning to have in your life when you got out? Obviously, you said you were chatting to him and he was trying to do music thing and obviously there was a bond there, no? Yeah, 100% bro, but it was like... <coughs> yeah, obviously, I heard that when I heard, I remember the, my window was open and I was on my bed writing. I was in high down and I heard something about a knife. No, sorry, a gun. And I heard him say Dutch. I heard him say party. But that was it. I didn't hear anything about anyone got shot or. Cause I heard, I'm hearing the, the last of the conversation to get. I wasn't paying it any mind. So I didn't pay no more attention. And the following morning, again, I was writing on my bed. It was early, maybe half eight or nine. And that's when they said that a 50 year old man had been shot. And I knew he had just turned 50, did you get it? Because um, he just missed his birthday. I think he was, before he came out, I think he came out, when did he come out? He might come out late October or early November 2019. But he just missed his birthday, did you get it? So I remembered that. But yeah, it was one, like, it was one of those ones like, He was around people he wasn't supposed to be around, so it wasn't surprising, but it was definitely um, usually fr frustrating. And 
So what do you think he got sort of set up by people around him? Obviously, he had people around him that didn't have his best interests at heart, so. I don't know about getting set up by no. I tell you, you know what, with this, I tend not to go too, too deep. Do you get it? Obviously, I give a couple little, like the audio book for free, I go in, do you get it? I might wake up that day and say, fuck it, damn. But it's one of them ones there where, look, everyone knows who slapped my man in it. Like, yeah, five over there looking for my man in it. They put him on crime watch in it. Do you get it? But it's a funny one, because for me, I know, obviously, I know Donny, I know Donny's a little snitch, you get me? So I know my niggas up there, like, pissed at, like, an itch licked him down, you know, like that. Um, and then you got to remember, for me, when I'm sitting there, I've been watching this team for a second. And there's always someone in that team itching. But if it's not C1, it's ends. If it's not ends, it's someone else, it's Mark. If it's not... It's just acceptable when it's got to accept that that's the snitch gang, you know, to get it. So it's like, it's not even worth addressing, but it's pointless. Mm. It's RIP Fox, you get it? Yeah, but you kind of obviously, like you say, you did kind of address certain points of it in your book. Mm. And so talk to me about when the book came out, obviously that must have made a lot of noise. Um, well, it did make a lot of noise, and again, unbelievable book I've listened to it for a few times I can't lie and I highly recommend that to anyone obviously all the links are going to be in the description box below yeah and so talk to me about that book then book two was a madness because I'm in HMP Hideout yeah Fox has just dropped uh, I want to put a little tribute out to him obviously I can't record so what I had to do is I put an ad out for actor on starnow.com uh, and I don't know, maybe 300 actors came back, yeah? It was a lot. And then I gave them the task, like basically my PA, Natasha, at, at the time, she um, got, she downloaded this app where you could record the phone call. So basically she's recording the call where I read to say a chapter in the style that I want it. And I gave it to all 300 actors say look whoever gets it the closest if you, you get the closest to this that's what I'm going with you get it and it so happens that the first person to come back was the most decorated actor and the best and that was Dean Kirby who ended up narrating it so it was a case of I read I read the old book once I picked the actor I read the old book over the phone she recorded it then she'd send it to the transcriber who would listen to what I've said and then write the script. It'd go back to the PA who would read it to me. Once I was sure that it was, yeah, what it was, it, it was what it's supposed to be, then we'd send it a few chapters at a time to the actor who would record it, send it back to the PA who would play it for me. I would listen to it, make sure it's 30. Then it goes to the sound engineer who does the sound effects. And that's how we made book two and published it right when I was in that prison cell. It was well made, I really like it. And like I said, it's so gripping in terms of the words and obviously the speech you use and the sound for everything. Is, but um, were you happy with how, with Matey on it, his voice? and I was happy with his voice. I was happy with his style. Um, over happy, I think he's a talented um, actor. Um, obviously, he struggled with the, to use patois or, 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 or certain. Was he white? He was a white fella, yeah. Yeah. To use certain slang. He did sound white. Yeah, he sounded like a Cockney fella. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think he done a good job. He did do a good job. It didn't affect how I enjoyed it. Obviously, just I, I thought he did sound like he was white still, but it didn't affect how I enjoyed it. But obviously, it would have been better with you but obviously circumstances were what they were and didn't you mention to me the other day that you might be re-releasing it you going to, with your own voice yeah i'm going to re-record it um and re-release it for free of charge yeah that'd be unbelievable as well so i look forward to seeing that come yeah. out and so talk to me about um the response then from the second book then um there must be obviously lots of positive it's making lots of noise getting lots of views and obviously there must have been a few upset people at the same time obviously there were some revelations and obviously 
um, good and bad for different people um, in the book. Um, talk to me about the whole Dutch Chevelli situation within the book and how you end up. Was were you speaking to Fox the whole time? Like while you were in jail, while he came out, you in constant contact with him, so you knew what was going on within their circle and within the situations. Um, in terms of the reaction to the book, I think first person to react to it is the book and the, the documentary promo was Del P. He was the first one to react. Um, and obviously he went nuts because I pointed out in a documentary promo that he pointed out his Cody on the M charge. But what's basically happened, bro, is I've dropped that and I asked Big Ego to post it and they posted it, yeah? Now, what a lot of people don't understand is I don't run my social media. I seem to think I run my social media. The amount of messages I get on a daily basis and people think they're talking to me. Um, the people running my social media, whether it's my cousin might run it some days or the PA might run it or the social media manager might run it, the guy who does all the posting. And they have to play games with these people. But they think they're speaking to me. Anyway, I'm inside. I ain't got no phone. My PA's got my phone. Yeah? So, I might not, I might not, but a lot of messages I won't get in real time. I might phone every hour. But there'll be times I'm on the phone for three hours with her. Do you get it? And what's happened is Del P has asked big ego to post his response to me which is a very disrespectful uh, fabricated manufactured spiteful um, response big ego sent it to me yeah he sent it to my whatsapp saying Dill P's asked me to post this question mark Obviously, my PA, I don't know if she was out or whatever, or I was sleeping, whatever, but we didn't speak till the morning. Biden has posted it. Yeah, it's, I've gone off my fuck it, I've gone off my nuts. Like, we didn't, what did you get? See, he ended up pulling both, yeah? But I was kind of pissed, and I'm, I, I, I was kind of pissed because it was like, one, I found out they kind of knew each other. Did you get it? Two, what he's talking is a load of nonsense. I, what did he say? Um, P go threw a brick in my face. No, he didn't. Nobody threw a brick in my face. You made it all up. If anyone threw a brick in my face, it wouldn't be a secret that only you know. It was something we all know. Yeah, I'm very public like that in terms of, do you know like that? If someone, mm -hmm. that's, you're, you're, you're getting ratings for that, you're talking nonsense. Then the, the next thing he was like, um, him and Sparks was running GB in 1993. No, you wasn't. He was like 13. What are you talking about? I'm like 20. Are you, are you crazy? Then there was another thing. He ran me down with a knife and I was running. No, you never. Obviously another false T. Full statement, bro. Do you know what you think? We was in um, Belmarsh. Not Belmarsh. Yeah, we was in Belmarsh. We were in the, in the yard. I remember being with my cold E. And my man's come on the yard and he saw me, he's got boomy, he's took his jacket off and wrapped it round his hand to get it. Like he's gonna be in a sword fight to get it. And yeah, my man was just mocking him, innit? Like, yo, boss, so come here. He's a baby, innit? He's that kind of vibe, innit? Yeah. And 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 and, and it, it it didn't go more than that. He took two laps and then my cold D was in my ears, no one was in my ears. No one was on some stuff like um, he wants to talk about the case because we was on separate spurs yeah and I said listen that dickhead yeah, yeah pattern up in it and he went and told my man to keep it moving and my man moved off the wing and went to another wing right. that's it and then I didn't see him again or hear from him again until that's 2002 yeah two, one. I didn't hear from Dopey again until 2000 and, um, when did I come out? I came out 2019. 
219 after my book came out. He contacted me again via this chick um, and basically, you know, he, he was like, yeah. No, what am I talking about? I didn't hear from him again until 2012 after the play came out. And he wrote to me and he was like, I'm so proud of you, you're one of us, read about your play, blah, blah, blah. Then he was like, I don't really like you very much, but would you help me get my book published? And I remember writing him back and I was like, yo, big man, you need to go learn some people skills and just kept it moving. And I didn't hear from him again until 2019 when the book came out. Same thing, he popped up in my DMs via this chick who's running his, 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 um, his platform and he wants a cut of the pie and what's going on? I'm like, what's wrong with this madman? What pie are you talking about, bro? Yeah, we can all eat and all and yeah, just talking a lot of nonsense. Um, I just tried to do one and it and they was like made little threats that they would, you know, tarnish my name and whoa 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 yeah, whatever, keep moving. And I didn't hear from him again until after the next book come out. When I put out book two, he popped up again. Motherfucker was stalking me, did you get it? But I'll say this in it. Del P is one of them and them. Did you get it? Um definitely one of them and them. Um And it's only since he's death I kind of reflected on why he felt, how he felt, and where that hatred come from. And I can see where it came from, because first and foremost, when we come from jail, 92, January 93, and we formed up this GB team, he got pushed to the curb. Because remember, all those youngers, whether it was Tariq, GB, um, Shifty, Dopey, Sparks, they're together on a daily. When we come on the road, I've promoted Sparks. Sparks is now with me on a daily. So we might see some of the other youngers on, but on a daily, do you get it? So their team ain't what it is no more in terms of their day-to-day -day team. Yeah? Tariq ended up going to Lee Iroad, partying with the Lee Iroad man then. Shifty was about whatever, being in and out of jail, whatever. And Del P ended up in Woolwich. Do you get it? But it was like that for a reason, because they didn't make the cut. They didn't make the grade. Do you get it? Because everyone's talking about this GB thing, so I'm just going to lay it down straight. Those guys, why they're good guys, as far as in that gang world, that gangster world, they didn't make the cut. Do, do, do you get it? They wasn't, they wasn't cut from the right cloth. Where Sparks was cut from the right cloth. Do, do, do you get it? But I get to understand that there were people that have some resentment for that. Plus, on top of that, I did violate his dad back in the day. Everybody knows that. He might have been pissed about that as well. And there was one or two other little incidents, yeah. But I don't hold that against him. Um, it is what it is. Um, he's a GB soldier still, do you get it? Um, but, don't ever get it twisted and feel like he's ever like even raised his, his voice in anger in my presence. It back then it definitely didn't happen, and yeah, he, he, he's not that stupid. Or he wasn't that stupid back then. But at the same time, let the man rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace, still be sure. Yeah, rest in peace. And um, what about other uh, people who got in touch after the second book then? What about the whole Dutch thing? And obviously there's a lot of allegations in the book. Um, and did uh, Dutch's camp get in touch with you, try and get a book taken down or anything like this? Was there any pressure put on you? No, it's wrote on my, it's wrote on my page. Do you know what happened, yeah? Is, so you had the big ego situation, yeah? Um, so he took it down. Then you had made you think... Alan, yeah? And this is why I don't fuck with them to this day. Do you get it? Um, Alan posts up the documentary promo, the one minute one, 
with the X on Dutch's face. A man and got onto him and he took it down after, I don't know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or whatever. When I heard, I've got it in by an email, I'm like, yo, big man, what's all? What the fuck you doing? Did you get it? And he's come back to me saying, boy, a bit man's, man's getting onto him. Did you get it? It's more asshole than it's worse. It's worth. So I'm saying to this Alan guy, this made you think guy, the guy who runs the show, fuck them niggas, innit? And you got a sister, and you got a mum. And you got and you got a daughter and you got aunties. Huh? And he was like, I've got this in writing. If man wants to deny it, I will just post it in it. In an email. Do you get it? He come back and he's, he's just saying, boy, it's too much trouble and woo woo woo. I'll post your audio book. Yeah? I'll post your audio book, but I'm not gonna post a documentary promo. I had time to go fuck himself. Do you get it? I said, bruv, if you're going to defend that dirty little nonce, that's what I said to him, and if you're going to hide for him and cover for him, and you're going to stop me basically um, speaking my truth and putting my nigger's truth out there, I don't want to fuck with you. I don't care how, how big your platform is. So you won't be posting my audio book. Mm. And, that, and um, I've told him that in writing in a response to his email. And so... Had Fox told you about the whole situation with the... Yeah, big up tiny in his book, and it's Not the whole it's situation, it's... but bits and pieces. I don't want to go into too much and incriminate myself still. Do you get it? Like, you know, when you're in being, you're not supposed to have certain things. Do you get it? Yeah. But, um... Yeah, I knew... You've been told one, two things. One or two things, some dodgy behaviour, and, you know, obviously the incident that I refer to, that I don't need to go into again, in all your book too. But, um, obviously, so people getting at people who are trying to help you, platforms get... But did anyone ever get in touch you directly and try and pressure you, you and try and tell you that this book needs to be taken down or anything like no. this and nothing like that? But that that particular yeah. But you went from that that old Dutch thing. Yeah. Yeah. No. no. And um, obviously the the response that you got in general and stuff, the amount of uh, listeners and the amount of hits, and do you be happy with it? Yeah. Um, Yeah, do you know what it done well? It was it was selling a lot of books. Like it was pandemic, books were moving like hot cakes. Bro. I bought it, so shout out, and it was more than happy with it. Yeah, it was... everyone, this book was moving, and I remember um, it's the same kind of drama with these vlogs. Um, London Street Legends, Is it London Street Legends. Yeah. They had it up, yeah? After big drama, but they had it up. But then they posted their peace thing. So now we get all the feedback in it, yeah. They posted their peace thing. Boom, you've got like, I don't know what it was, 15,000 views, their peace got eight. It was like some W, did you get it? And that's what pissed me off with that big ego guy. He goes, this is like WWF. So he knew what he was doing. That's the only other story. Get back to this out get back to this um London Street, London Street Legends. Um I'm there fuming, pacing the cell. I said, nah, nah, they gotta take this down, fuck that. But we're having a meeting, the team's like, yo, if they take it down, you're gonna lose cells. This is what's making it jump off, you're getting mad cells. And I was like, fuck the money, take it down. Did you get it? They didn't wanna take it down. Yeah. Should have left it up still. In hindsight, like, we wind the clock, I just left it. Yeah. yeah you were locked in a box, Stuart, no, without fucking clarity. Huh? You were locked in the cell without the clarity to think properly. Yeah, I made a bad decision because it was, bro, it was, trust me, a lot of books were going. This is like ping, 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 ping. Books are moving off, you get it? So I tried to take it down. They didn't want to take it down. So I had to threaten them with legal advice. Mm. And then there was some other little paths, and they took it down in the end, yeah? And then Lucian Legends, I told them to take it down as well. And the reason why I told Lucian Legends to take it down was because previous... Let me just give you a quick story, so you need to understand what was going on with these vlogs, yeah? When Lucian Legends had no followers, and they weren't following no one, they came to me, because my book had just been published 2.19. And they said, can we, can we like, 
put your book out there on our page and we, but their profile picture was a picture of Sparks did you get it? so I said take it down you got, you, why are you using Sparks' picture? yeah so understand this and this is someone who's trying to um, basically piggyback off the back of my book that's just been published and the old GB team do you, do, do, do you get it? That's why you put Sparks' picture there. That's why you come yeah. to me. Do you get it? And they came back to me about 20 minutes later and they might have had two or four followers. And they had a picture of Trevor up. And I said I said to our New York Legends, take it down. My man's going for his appeal. Take down his photo, innit? So they put someone else's photo up anyway, whatever. They started to move. But then they started to message me saying like, ha, oh, oh, ha, oh. ha. Everybody thinks we're you. So a lot of people thought that I was running this Lucian Legends thing from early and I wasn't even running it. Do you get it? Um, so anyway, I made them take down my shit off their page. The book, my photo. Yeah? Got kind of edited with them a couple of times as well. All right, cool. But when I went to jail, what they've done is they've gone into my page because my page has been opened. Yeah, took my photo off my page and put it back up on their thing. I don't know this, I'm in jail, innit? When I come out of jail, I've looked, my, my pictures on Lucian Legends, and a bag of comments. Do you, do, do you get it? So I'm like, yo, pussy, you must all this. Take down my thing. Hmm. Again, legal letter, yes. Yeah. And they have to take it down. Do you get it? And that's why I make them take it down because. Yeah, so yeah. some of these pages move funny on this social media thing, isn't it? It's well, a different world move, to what you used to. Bro, they move funny, bro. They move... They're fucking culture vultures, bro. Do you get it? Trying to profit off the man, then. Do you get it? Do you know like that? These... Pla Listen, these platforms are jokers. They don't, even under they don't even know the game. They don't even know what they're talking about. Look at Lucian Legends. They've got on there a guy called Barry White from Evergreen Lane. They said he's a legend. If you know, you know. If they knew Barry White was licked down by a man, I'm not going to say who, licked down by a man because he was a registered informer. Do you get it? Big case. Yeah? Front page, we've got to do is Google him. South London Press, front page, police take out police informer from Belmarsh and take him to drugs house. They took Barry White from Belmarsh, took him to a drugs house to get cracked. Then took him to his girl's house so he could fuck her and then brought him back to the prison. So when he got killed, it was a big thing. The officers got suspended. Do you get it? I even got nicked with a machine. Yeah? I even got nicked with a machine in a car, bro. And Barry White died, what, but maybe four or five days later. He's dead. I'm on a machine charge. Yes, Barry White's machine. <laughs> Yeah, 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 my uncle, yeah, tell them. Yeah, yeah, we borrowed the car, yeah, boom, yeah. Barry White had the machine, the, the, the nephew got nicked. Barry White came around the house, said, I'm so sorry, I left the machine in the car. Your nephew got nicked. I'm like, yeah, yeah, what, call Barry White's Andalus. Yeah, that's what I'm telling the lawyers, yeah. Get in contact with Barry White's Andalus, yeah? Cause I want to know what's going on. Why has he got guns, leaving the guns in cars, and now I'm getting nicked? When I got to court, this went, go home. Sharp, it worked, yeah, like that's it. Do you get it? But here where it is. Informer, do you get it? 100% informer registered, no long thing. Not everybody, it's not, it's, it, 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 it's, but these platforms don't know this. Mm. And they've got loads of guys on their platforms like that. Yeah, they need to do a bit of research before they fucking put something like Well, so, they're this brother, they're just caught up in the hype, bro. Attention, dude. It's attention, bro. But, why hiding? And what I say to all of them is, don't get hiding in your face. I don't want to chat to you. But um, I think, uh, like you said, with the re-releasing the second book with your own audio, I think that'd be a great plan. And I think there's no time like the present. I think if, with your stuff starting to start and pop off now in a big way, catch the momentum. I think it would, um, yeah garner more interest than the first time it come out, especially with you able to push it. Um, I know obviously you had a team, but with you able to push it yourself, there's no one better than yourself, is there, to push your own stuff. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing the response and how, much, how far that gets out there in the future. And so talk to me about your plans though for the future um, and future books. You mentioned 
um, the film stuff, you've been writing some scripts, any TV stuff, music stuff, I know you've got, got a hand in the music game as well. Talk to me about all your future plans then. Yeah, well, obviously the long-term goal is always, and short-term goal is to make feature films of substance, to get story and character up onto the big screen. Um, so yeah, my plan is to um, shoot a feature film pilot. That's within the next couple of months. Um, we've got a 10K budget. That's for a film called, initially called Blowback, but it's now called Osman. <coughs> um, obviously I've got audio book three coming out. I signed an exclusive deal for my life story slash documentary in November. Um, that's with a woman called Angelique who works at Sky. I'm not sure it's gonna actually be at Sky now. Um, or be produced by, by Sky. However, we've got that bubbling. Um, the paperback, uh, back, um, auto bio. The publishers have said, yep, they're good to go. Takes three months. Um, so yeah, we, we, we got that, we got, we, we got that on the back burner. And obviously we also got Star Music Limited, which, is a new management slash record label. Always looking for artists, talented artists. Um, so yeah, we're just pushing, bro. We're just working hard, man. It's, it's all about the work rate, bro. Of course, that's what it's about. You sound obviously, we, I know you're on the right path and I look forward to seeing all the stuff and all your future successes. As you like to say, obviously there you're always looking for artists. And so from where we're filming today, um, back, a couple of weeks ago, you ended up putting out a podcast with Sean Atwood. And so, guys, again, I'd highly recommend you watch that as well. Great interview. Shout out to Sean as well. Um, yeah, shout out to Sean Atwood. Link will be in the description. Um, obviously, that's starting to gain some momentum and get some views. And talk to me about your response on that then. Um, positive and negative, what's uh, off the back yeah, of that? Yeah, most of it's positive. You get, there's a lot of positive. Um, for example, strangers been messaging me on YouTube and Instagram. Um, celebrities, for example, a few days ago I got a message from Wiley. I didn't believe it. I was like, if this is you, send me a voice note. Did you get it? Shout out the Godfather. Shout out the Godfather. And he sent a couple of voice notes and then the second voice note, he's really excited when he's telling me about, yeah, when you was in Stonebridge in the yard and you come down, yeah, I was like, okay. So yeah, you, 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 you just, there's a lot of positive support out there, but you also get negative. Um, I'm sure everybody knows, everybody's seen Dutch's teams, his PR team have just gone crazy, Team Dutch, um, due to me um, giving my opinion that I believe that he knew the Fox's niece was underage um, before he started tampering with her. And so guys, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe to Tiny Carlon's YouTube channel and make sure you're following him on Insta. Links will both be in the description because you don't know what things might be coming out on his channels down the line. I'm sure there's going to be an in-depth explanation to any situations and maybe more revelations coming out through certain voices or certain other things. There's certainly going to be lots of exciting stuff on there in the future. Um, so it's going to be a madness. As I said, uh, we're really looking forward to everything that you've got going on in the future. Hopefully we're going to have lots of stuff going on together in the future as well. And um, are there any other topics that we, you feel like we haven't covered or you feel like you want to address? I just feel like the youth, the, the, the youth cause a lot of them watch me, innit? yeah? More than I knew. And a lot of them are paying attention more than I knew, but from the messages that I'm getting. And I did, they, 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 they watch these situations and don't watch in, they need to watch how I handle the situation first and foremost. But they need to also understand and look at what's really going on in terms of decision making. Because look at the last two weeks and look at what's really going on. We got IPO got killed, RIP. Right? 
So Ipo's been killed, yeah? And then you've got Dutch losing his mind completely and sending a message to Asko saying your boy got blamed, i.e. your boy, your boy, boy your boy got touched. <coughs> I've never heard something so crazy. Who does that? Did you get it? Yeah? And then that runs side by side with Marvin, and I'm calling his name now, yeah? And Team Dutch posting up R.I.P. Fox the other day. Yeah? When that same PR team with Marvin badding up Fox's kids, disrespecting Fox's kids, yeah? Because he's not here, when they couldn't even, they couldn't even breathe when, when Fox was here. Do, do you get it? So, you ain't got no relationship with the, with the family. You're disrespecting the family. Even on the voice notes, he disrespects the family. You've heard them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've got to sit there and watch you posting up their thing. Knowing that his management team, this is what the kids know, knowing that the, the, the management team had something to do with their father's death. Because that's what they believe. I've spoke to them. Kai. And that's what you believe. The PR team. Because I've got that, yeah? You told me that. So, why are you torturing Fox's kids? And tormenting them. But it's that same behaviour. Why are you sending a message to Asko? You're a scumbag. Because no one wishes death on no one, right? And we definitely don't rejoice in a man's death either. Worse is not even a man you really... Did you get it? And that's what a man needs to realise. That's the kind of human being you're dealing with. I don't do with human beings like that. Do you get it? In my whole life, yeah, yeah, all day, innit? Yeah, quickly. This is 2022, bro. Spotlight, do you get it? I don't deal with people like that who can't articulate a sentence or can't even say a sentence without effing and blinding. Spitting on the net and shouting and screaming and making threats and then, you know, trying to create scenarios. I ain't got time for that. I work too hard. Did you get it? So I just want the youth then to watch these scenarios and watch how these guys are moving and know, yeah, move different. Do you get it? It's all a lie. Do you get it? That's what I want. I just want the youth them to know the game's a lie. Don't follow these new Instagram bad social media bad boys. Do you get it? That are talking wicked in one hand. And the next time they're like, yo, if I get touched, boy, then you know where it is. Yeah, that's all long. <laughs> that's that. That's lay lay. Do you get it? Whereas, because you heard that, didn't you? And I'm just like, bro, first and foremost, you cannot, and another thing, do not listen to my books, my audio books, or my stories online and feel, that's me now. That's not me now. Do you get it? That's me 20 years ago. I'm just giving you the story now. We've evolved since then. We've grown since then. We're doing different stuff. Do you, do you understand where I'm coming from? I think a lot of people get caught up in, yeah, that's him now. Yeah, so big up all the man then, big up all the youth then, big up all the man and then bing. Yeah? You know the thing. Study hard, train hard. Yeah, and learn how to fucking cook. <laughs> Well, yeah, like I said, absolute blessing for the opportunity. R.I.P. Sparks, R.I.P. Uh, Fox, Duffus, R.I.P. I'm gonna big up Penny, Bad Boy. I'm gonna big up, big up little Andy. Yeah, legends. Big up, yeah, yeah. Oval, R.I.P. How you mean? 100. percent Yeah, R. come on, man. R.I.P. All the fallen soldiers out there. And um, so on the social media thing, let's remind people, like I said, they'll all be in the description. But the YouTube Game Changing Moment, Instagram GCM Ent website. Oh, GC GCM Ent. Ent. Group, is it? Them? Group, yes. Group. Dot com. That's right. So guys, like I said, everything will be in the description. Go over, check that out. Go and support the books, you know. 
Um, look out for see the new books coming out down the line and get onto his YouTube because he's got some real good content over the last few months and obviously lots more coming in the future. Um, some gory prison stories that hasn't even spoken about on here, some exclusive stuff that you'll see on his channel. And like I said, lot, lots more to come with me and him together in the future. So uh, enough respect for the opportunity. And any other shout outs you want to do to your team, your internal team and people that are helping you now to achieve your goals? Yeah, man, just team success, bro. And all the star music family, just keep pushing, keep working. That's all it's about, work rate, man. We're just working hard and we'll see where it takes us. And guys, anyone who wants to get in touch with Tiny, jump onto the website, jump onto the Instagram and throw a message. You know? So guys, I hope you all enjoyed this. I'm sure you have. This has been an epic one. Must be nearly four hours now by then and thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.